Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome back to the Hardcore Season 2 world, where we are back here for episode number 7. Thank y'all so very much for the support on the last one. If y'all are still enjoying the series, please be sure to click that like button down below. I have been an extremely busy bee here on the world, getting some stuff done just in between episodes, because I built up Creeper Rock over here. We kept coming out of the mine in the last episode that we made, and there was always a creeper sitting on top of the rock, so I decided to make this little face right over here, and I kind of I love it i think it's really sweet and you might also notice that the uh diamond axe over here is very dead on top of getting the big old potato field in from last time i decided to spend a good while chopping trees so we have so much stuff to be able to build with here coming in the near future because i want to do a lot of building today i want to build a fishing village or a fishing dock right over in this area and actually a little bit of boat action off over the water as well and I'd kind of got this carrot field started because we don't have too much in the way of carrots right now. One thing I've realized recently as I've been running a second hardcore world over on the Twitch streams because I'm doing one of those 100 days of surviving Minecraft challenges and I play the game way differently over there. Here inside of this world right now we're on day 81 and that world over there we've been uh, we're on about day 40 right now. I'm farther ahead in that world than I am in this one with half of the time spent on it because I started doing a lot of stuff involving villagers and getting a lot of that automated stuff set up early between the melon and pumpkin farms, the sugarcane farm automation, and all that stuff. So it's kind of crazy being able to think about like what I did in 40 days versus what we've done in 80 days so far. I wanna do a little bit of building down at the edge of the water because as mentioned with the villagers, as I was just talking about in the other world, that's been awesome. And I wanna set up all of our villagers over on the Mushroom Island. So I think we're gonna be finishing up this little place in the next year episodes and starting off our city on the mushroom island but first to do that we need to get a boat over here so we can do some fishing and everything like that for ourselves because that's a great way of getting experience thank you everybody who left a bunch of great ideas because the next one that everybody said was either come on come on sheepies i'm just trying to get over here the ideas i was given by everybody was basically go do some fishing get some experience by fishing because that's probably the safest way to do it or go into the nether and start mining quartz. So I'm thinking today we do fishing and then we get in the nether next time. Now, before we get to building of the actual dock area, I wanna get ourselves with a new road coming all the way down here to help define where the remaining fields are actually gonna be going. So if we send some of the pathway blocks right over here, and I'm thinking we probably bring it uh, maybe actually over to this side. We can kinda of do a little curve over there. And perfect, the pathway is set up going all the way from our house down to the water right now. We've got about two or three blocks wide going throughout the entire place so we can run around along it like crazy. Oh man, I can't wait to get the rest of these fields in here. I wanna start doing some two tall flower fields here too. For some reason, this barrel entering into the mining area I keep throwing every random thing I have on my inventory before we dive on down. I have so much wool in here now. <laughs> but down we go and alive. Let's see, last time we went off that way a good distance, and I think I got everything over here as far as the diamonds go. Yep, yep, we did. I do not have my Fortune 3 pickaxe on me right now because I have not combined it into this diamond pickaxe, so if we see any of those, I'm just going to leave them for now, come back and get them later. Right now, what I'm really here for is, honestly, some diorite, some cobblestone, and if we can get any iron, that would be sweet. And of course, can't skip out on any andesite finds. We're finding some diamonds down here way at the bottom of this diorite thing. How many do we have? Oh, is it five? There we go. All right, I'm gonna have to come back and get these guys later. Gonna leave a little torch down there for them. It's really pretty amazing how many blocks you can get when you start mining out just the blobs of the different types of stones you can find underground. Check how much diorite we're able to get out of that. That is gonna be absolutely awesome for building here in a bit. Made it all the way up to level 30 now, which is pretty sweet, so we can get another enchantment on our diamond armor here. So I'm hoping we can roll a protection there, but holy cow, look at any resources we've been able to get. Oh, I managed to find my way into my old strip mines. Huh. Well, okay then. My inventory is pretty full right now, so I can't really cram too much more andesite in here. But I was able to grab a bit of gravel out of this point here too, which is pretty great. But if we just go a few blocks further, might as well officially connect up the tunnels. And there we go. Apparently we're mining on one block lower than those other ones, so uh, it's all good. We've got some cobblestone smelting down to some stone over there and some iron smelting as well. And uh, taking our very, very broken pickaxe here as I want to run back down to the mines and get those diamonds. Come to Papa. There we go. Let's get them all. Ten diamonds off of eight blocks. Oh, not too great. Better than nothing, I guess. I've got a bunch of blocks in here ready to rock for the brand new build. But first, let's head on over to the enchanting tower and see what we can roll for the enchants on our gear. The up for right now is we have two pieces of diamond armor and we've also got a diamond shovel. That 
that looks like protection three. That one's protection three as well. What are we looking over here? Silk touch on a shovel. I do like that because that means we can get grass over to the mycelium island. So I think I might take that one here and bummer. Okay, I was hoping for something a little bit more than that, but that's that's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Silk Touch is still Silk Touch. I will take that. Now for this build over here, I want to do something slightly different than what we've done for the styles of the village back there. Well, I guess our house and our storage room, because I wanted to not use cobblestone for this one. We've used a lot of cobblestone. Ooh, look at those grass blocks right in there. We've used a lot of cobblestone in the build so far, but I really like how with the tower, at least, we went for much of a smoother approach with the stone. There we go. This should do it for the space for us here but anyways where i got the idea from for this build was i actually woke up got out of bed this morning and while i was walking the dogs i was kind of looking at the houses around me in the neighborhood that i live in and i had this idea because there's somebody whose house down the road had like a detached car garage to it which I know doesn't make sense in like a medieval setting, but it gave me an idea of, let's throw some andesite down here for some block out markers here, is if we have that guy right there, and we're gonna do another one coming across, we have a three wide entrance to be a front, like this is the garage, the garage entrance right here, and then I wanted to bring that backwards a few blocks. So we have some space for a big garage door. And that brings us to something right like this for the shape of the structure. But one thing that I thought was really cool about the house that I was looking at, I've never even noticed this one in my neighborhood before, to be honest, but it had a front awning protecting the garage. It was kind of weird. So what I think we can do out here is bring up a few blocks of oak and we can have a little bit of an awning over the front of this where the roof is actually gonna be extending out, which in turn would give us a front area that looks a little bit like this we'll fix up that archway and make it a lot nicer and everything like that but just goes to show that simply looking around in life around you you can find a lot of inspiration for the minecraft builds that you do now for this one since i haven't planned out the build completely yet the way i like to get started on these is just by using simple blocks to get started and don't make things too complicated before we really get into the detail phase i did lower the entire top down one block and i brought these guys down one as well just as a quick heads up there and that was because otherwise everything out here would be way way oversized compared to what we have on the rest of the buildings that we have going around so i'm trying to keep a lot of the similarities in the size and shape for how we do these houses but really playing with differences in the texture now we have a big flat wall on the back here we've got a big flat wall right over here and we've just got a bunch of big flat walls so we're gonna have to really mix that stuff up as we're going throughout here i'm okay with having some flatter space but yeah i don't want it to be everywhere so let's get up here a little ways where we can start the roof action of just taking some slabs all the way around here and then doing a little bit of the doubled up slab action right like that and then we're gonna do the same thing right throughout here. Get in the last few buttons here on the front because I wanted to give you an example of how this awning was going to look throughout the entire structure, or at least on this front side. We'll figure out the rest of this stuff as we go. Got the buttons up there too because, you know, we gotta have some good buttons on these builds. We can't do this build without any buttons, but that kind of thing right there. That idea is what I really wanted to start playing with. And then inside of here, we can do those little wooden archways that I also do love to do. But I'm a big fan of that. And now I had an idea here is if we took some strip spruce log and actually brought it all the way down here to help add some extra depth into the structure and some more supporting and there went my diamond axe okay goodbye buddy some more supporting beams to this front section here since it's kind of an older building and we're not super sophisticated and everything like that going for that more medieval style i feel like we have to have some form of a support beam throughout this area so on top of what we have in here i was thinking we could bring these little beams throughout this way or at like and so and that'll help those things feel like they fit in a little bit more adding an extra layer to it the extra half slab coming down helps to feel like we're really supporting everything up there now what i would love for you all to take away from this one here as we're kind of building the structure up here together a little bit further is you don't always have to have this amazing unique idea you don't always have to have this amazing thing that you're going to be doing the first person ever to do it you can always take inspiration from what's around you that's probably the way that people create their most unique things is just using the life around them and figuring out how they can add that to what they kind of have and doing their own take on top of it a lot of people constantly are bugging me and asking me for how do you find all your ideas how are you coming up with these insane things all the time you always have a new build coming here and well it's because I just look at the things around me that I find in my life or that I come across or just whatever it might be that I think are really, really cool. And I'm like, how can I put that into mine? And it is 100% okay if this inspiration comes from another YouTuber or comes from a creator or even comes from one of your friends. If you did something inspired by something one of your friends did or say you're playing on a Minecraft server with them, I'm not saying copy their build because that's not right. 
But if you are inspired by what they did inside of their build, maybe how they did a roof shape or how they did something, some colors they use, some blocks they use, and you're like, oh my God, I want to build something using that. It's so absolutely amazing. Go for it and do that. But just remember that it's okay to take inspiration from something else. It's pretty much impossible to always come up with your own unique ideas nowadays because there's so many people out here creating. There's so many different things happening. Build what you want to build, create what you want to create, and just enjoy playing Minecraft how you want to play Minecraft. But what I was going to say on that is I've always thought of myself as the Minecraft builder. And that's something that my channel is really identified around is doing these big, amazing, crazy builds all over the place, which is something I absolutely love doing. I love the idea of building a a giant city building a giant world and having it all being connected you can see everything from wherever you are i've also very much fallen in love with the idea of just building small little villages like what we have over in here or like what we might be doing over in the city and everything like that i've absolutely loved building this type of stuff over here and kind of just taking the more a chill approach to the minecraft world instead of always being like how do i go bigger and better Really did not intend for this to turn into a talkie talky episode and going over all that stuff, so I do apologize for that. It's just kind of something that's been on my mind recently and I was trying to figure out how to say it in a video and it just kind of worked for today's video. So hopefully that at least uh, hit the mark for one or two people. But overall, this structure is really coming together and I'm thinking for the windows for these ones, nah, I, I did bring glass. We're not gonna skimp out on that. We're gonna actually use some lovely glass windows and we look at that right there. Oh my gosh, we got some trap doors around the window. Starting to get some of the texturizing in here. The way I like to do this stuff to begin with at least is just pick a little bit of a spot over here. And actually, since we have this as a big face here, I'm thinking these two guys, we're gonna bring some more of the stone brick in and maybe actually on this side, just to give it a little bit more oomph and pop it out a touch, we can do that and throw some stone brick stairs on the front of these just to help it feel like this is actually its own face there. I know it's a flat line going across, but if we do that, that should help it out quite a lot. But as mentioned though, just tiny little bits of diorite around here, really not too much on this back face, more going around the front so it looks like it's ocean spray. To me, this feels like it's slowly turned into a challenge of can I build a house just using the off stone types of andesite, diorite, and granite. <laughs> we'll have to fix this up a little bit here later on. I think it's working out so far pretty well. And maybe we can just do the last little bits of diorite onto there. And then it's going to be a lot of stone coming in. But I like this right now. I think if we get some plants here in the front, it could be really cool. Getting the garage door in now, I'm thinking we just do a spruce door in the corner. Then we can come on up here and hopefully this will all work out for us. And I did those all on the wrong side. There we go. Now we've got the door from the inside and then from the outside, it's looking much better. But what we can do here instead is I do have this one little oak trap door left and we can turn it into a window in the door. Wow, amazing. And what I was thinking on top of that, so we can have a back entrance to get into this place in case we're running around or something like that, is we can break open, let's go on the outside, because this will help us break up that back face. If we come all the way back here, how many blocks in is that? That is three blocks in, so we don't want to do the same there. So that'd be right here, and then we'd be those three blocks. So maybe we do it right over here. I'm trying to make sure it's not exactly even as what we had on the front side or what we have over there, because I like having a little bit more variety to it. But what I'm thinking, is do we just take some oak logs right along here? There we go. That'll be much better for us. Okay. I like that a lot more. So now we just have a back little door entrance into this place so that we don't really have to worry about anything or we have two ways out is the more important thing. It's not very safe around here. So having a secondary exit, not a bad idea. Last but certainly not least is I need to come up here and add buttons all over this entire roof. Still quite amazing that an entire spruce plank gives one button. I don't know why, but that's the way things are. I've spent a good while detailing out the structure here, just having some more fun with it and just throwing in a lot of leaves pretty much around the entire place. But over here, I'm also working on a lookout point for us to chill on if we wanna look out over the ocean or just kinda of have a place for not really a full on lighthouse here, but just somewhere for somebody to call the ships coming in and out. But here is the front of the brand new building for ourselves. Added a bunch of fence gates over here, some lanterns and just some bushes and lots of coarse dirt action going on the floor, but I think it's looking very very cool so far. The idea is that we can have these oak trapdoors hanging here and then we just use some ladders that would take us all the way up if I could do this correctly. And then we are all the way up here. 
where I wanted to bring in a few, just uh, some dummy blocks right here so we can place some things, adding in some spruce trap doors, stretching all the way around. We now have a sweet little platform to hang out on that we can safely get up and down to from a ladder here. And then I was thinking these fences, probably bringing them up to being about two blocks tall. And then from here, it's gonna make it a little chunky, but I think that's a-okay is if we were to just bring some spruce slabs and have them inching all the way up here into the center, I think that could be okay. With the roof on, it looks pretty tight up here and we can really only see forwards and backwards, but that is totally fine with me here. I don't really think this is gonna be something we use too often. I more or less just wanted to build it because it sounded like a fun thing to add in up here. I don't know why. It's almost inspired off like a Firewatch style, like ranger outpost in the middle of the woods, but I kind of love it. That right there, I think is gonna work pretty perfectly for the front point. Now we need a dock and then we actually need a little bit of a boat out here. Now this here dock doesn't have to be too big for ourselves. So I was thinking we just bring a little bit of the oak wood action stretching up right over here. And then we can just come over to this side here too. So we can have a little three wide dock with some spruce slabs in the middle and using some oak wood as the supports. Thinking just seven or so blocks stretching out this way should be pretty good. I hope that we have enough oak wood to be able to get ourselves all the way up and down. Realistically, am I ever gonna check that it touches to the bottom? No, but I'm gonna know. I'm gonna know if I did it all the way or not, so I have to bring these pillars all the way down and not drown. Not drowning would be great. Okay, out of the water now. Got a few lanterns left for ourselves, so I think we just leave those two guys on the front there, and then I do have a third one, but I don't think it really needs to go back in this point. Do we want to add some fences along here too? It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad, so I think we're gonna do it. Now the last little addition I thought would be kind of fun for the Firewatch Tower up here is I do have this bell ready to go and I thought it'd be kind of fun to just have it hanging off the side. So if there needed to be an alert or something since we have the lantern down there, let's hang the bell right there. So if we need to have an alert or something, we can ring that and then you know everything else is going on around here. I spent a bit of time down here just adding some random things around the place on top of what I've already been doing and just getting mentally prepared for building a boat and realizing now that this episode is probably very long at this point in time, so welcome, I guess, to a mega episode. If it is, if it's not, I guess I added a lot of it out. But anyways, I dropped this down a little bit over here and added a jut out so we can actually park a Minecraft boat in there because right now, uh, this little ledge that we have right there be a little hard to use a Minecraft boat on. What I wanted to do was get all the way out here, not going too far off of the edge. I've had a few issues with drown popping up around me and how can I get quickly a block just out here that we can use? Probably just building off the kelp over here to determine where we actually want to put this structure or the boat that we're doing out in the water. Took the rest of that Minecraft day to get the pillar gone. But anyways, we're up here and I consider myself an okay Minecraft boat builder. And I'll be honest, I really hate that we are exactly centered on that. Uh, I'm moving ourselves over a few blocks. Hey, Drown Buddy, how you doing? I'm just gonna get rid of these planks. You sink on back down there, okay? When it comes to Minecraft boats, I'm able to make small, cool, custom looking ones at like a smaller scale, which I think we can get away with here. So we're gonna start off by, we have this five long area, throw some of these guys down here, maybe do something like that. They extend this out another two blocks, which brings us to seven, eight, and nine coming out right over here. Actually, I guess that's 10, because we did seven and then three more. That does make sense. Now, this will be the backside over here, so we wanna make it look like the boat is going that away right over there, so that can be a smoother slope on that side. And then over here, let's go with the one. And we're gonna do the two here again. And then I think instead of where we did those little guys, actually, you know what? No, we're just gonna make a clone. Something like this to get ourselves started over here, I think is going to be perfect. And then we could bring those guys right into here and I'm gonna be dancing around the drown. I wanna make this look like it could go either which way, which will be totally fine. And uh, hi drown, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by, but I would like to ask you to leave. We're gonna make a very obvious front of this one with how we're gonna situate the sail on top. But you know, for now, the whole of the boat can actually just look about the same. This boat is gonna be pretty long at this point, but it's gonna be a skinny one. I don't really don't know too much beyond what we're doing right now, but we'll figure it out as we're going. But I'm thinking we could do this guy right out here, do these guys stretch in two blocks again over the end there, and we'll do the same on this side. The idea that we're going for off of this is so that we can make an area that we can fish for ourselves and not have to worry about zombies or creepers or things walking up around us. So that's gonna to have to be something that we very much keep in mind as we're working throughout this place over here. And I don't wanna make it seem like it's too far off of the ground. So we're gonna be pretty basic on how we're doing a lot of these slopes. It's gonna be sitting very, very close to the bottom of the water or the surface of the water. 
Using a lot of stairs out here, we can actually help to build out a very, very interesting look and shape. So if we do something like that, I think this will be okay. That doesn't look too bad. I really actually don't like these stairs being that way on the ends though. Well, we've managed to make it safe at this point for sure, and it doesn't look half bad from down below. I think what we can do now though is grab a few of our trap doors and maybe help to smooth this out on the bottom. So if we do something like that, that could actually maybe work out for us. You know what, I can't break it, so we're just gonna leave them in there. It's totally fine, totally fine. To get our sail in for now so that we have it in here, the way I usually do this is by taking the entire length of the boat and you go roughly that high up here. So if we come over here, one, two, three, four, 17, 18, and 19 long right there. So if we could do this, that's one. Then we got two right there with the barrel. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 16, and 17. I'm thinking 17 will be about good for a 19 long boat. And then if we jump all the way into the water here and uh, hopefully land in the water, Looks very tall for now, but once we get all the rest of the details in on there, it's going to seem like it actually makes sense for being in here. We might uh, need a little bit more wool, though. Switching a few things around and adding some ladders into the side so we can actually get up here ourselves. And now we can start actually using a bunch of our trap doors that we have and a bunch of the slabs that we have. Because this point right up here is not going to be the final point for us. What I would like to do, though, is take this and probably bring it... How many blocks was that? Four blocks? So let's take this guy three blocks out here again. And then we're gonna leave two blocks again, just sticking out on its lonesome. So we're gonna do something like this. And this is where we can start incorporating a lot of the really cool ones. So we have two blocks overhanging right there, and then we'll have three blocks overhanging right in here. And then we can finish both of these lines off with some trap doors. This will really help to kind of bring a little bit more of a rounded curved shape to the boat itself. Instead of before, it was gonna be a very flat guy. Oh, hello, I'm trying to build a boat out here. Please, can we just not do this right now? I see all of those crossbows. You even have an enchanted one. And y'all just don't want to leave me alone? No, that's that's okay. I'm just going to take a little nap out here on the boat. And uh, you guys stay out the way over there, okay? It's fine. It's totally fine. If I look this way, they can't see me if I can't see them. But we need to add a lower beam for the sail to build itself off of. So if we take it and kind of do it at a bit of an angle here, it'll give it a lot more character for sure. Can you guys stop coming closer? Stop it. Stop it. Red light. It's like Simon says. Red light. No green light. It's only red light. Next thing I need to do, however, is get all the way to the top of this guy. So I think I'm just going to pillar up with some fences because I'm crazy. And why not? Fences are great pillaring blocks, right? I guess I could have done this after I went to get a lot more wool. But what I wanted to do up here, first and foremost, was extend it up even more. So we brought it up 17 blocks. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. I think that'll be pretty good for us. Fences are not a good pillaring block. It's impossible to catch them when they're falling down below you. Ah, oh, we just lost so many. Okay, guys, 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 please. Guys, I'm just going to go hang out with that sheep. You all just stay there, okay? Okay. The boat is looking pretty promising, though. I think if we get a sail that's going to go probably from there up into that point and then do a little C shape, like backwards C right in there to connect down to the lower point, it's going to look super cool. Starting out the sail now, we've got to figure out how to get a line from right here all the way up past that guy. And I want to follow the same kind of diagonal line that we had created previously. So I think if we use some blocks like these guys right over in here, and it seems most natural to step it up just one block at a time for the sail, we can always make it look like there's a little bit of a wind going through it and everything like that. So there might be a little bit of extra character, but actually back there, I need to bump that whole thing over another block looking at it now from this angle. Reason being is if we had that same like five long strip here in the center, I feel like it's going to be way too flat of an area down the middle, especially if we're trying to bend a sail around it. And from my understanding, when it comes to all this stuff, the more that we have that extra bend to it, the more it's going to look like the sail is actually being used and functional. Now, if we did this right, we should be about above that point where we ended the full blocks in the pillar. Yes, yes, we are. OK, so this is actually going to be working out great. I like having the sail, especially in this style of a sail, coming a little bit taller than that solid point. Doesn't have to be taller than the fences we have for that extra little bit of detail on the top. And man, we're going to have to carpet this whole thing, aren't we, to make it mob proof. But now we have that whole line done. Now it's going to be the fun part of where is the wind coming from? I think if we have the boat look like it's going that way, the wind would probably be maybe whipping along the shore and coming up through here. So we have it kind of pushing everything out to that side. We haven't done anything with the chimneys, so we don't really have any wind inside of this world. 
Now, I don't like having the harsh flat line down at the bottom where we just have all of the wool going all over the place. So I like to have a little bit of an area where it looks like it might be popping up. So we just have a little bit of the separation from the wood beam down below to where we have the bottom of the sail itself. Then back here, in order to help make this seem a little bit more secured, is I'm thinking we take this point, we got to figure out how to get it all the way up there while still having some character to it. And the way we can also do that to make it look like it's being really fortified along this whole point instead of just white wool is I'm going to throw some fences on it. So I went up three blocks and then up five blocks. And I'm thinking we go up another two blocks right here, bring it back in one. And then where are we at at that point? Because I want that to be a lone guy. Maybe? Maybe. No, we can bring. No, what do we want to do? That'll be perfect. So right up to here, and then we can bring that guy down another little touch. Perfect. The shape of the sail is really starting to come together now. I've just got to figure out how to cram a bunch of wool in here and make it actually look like it's uh, moving. Starting to make some progress down here with the front half of it at least, and uh, it's kind of weird. We're going to really have to take a look back on this one and see if it makes sense to us, but it's okay. It's one of those things that's just being influenced by the nature around it. So if it's a little messy, that is a-okay with me. Next up, I got to put a bunch of carpet on here, but I want to make sure that it looks good first before we start doing that. And uh, I think that's okay. You know, I think that's okay. I think we could actually maybe bring this section out a little bit more throughout here. Maybe like making that a little bit thicker right there, two blocks, and then maybe we do a little bit more out right like in there. Now the fun job of hoping I don't miss anywhere so we can get carpet on top of every single one of these ones. There's just a tiny extra pixel on top of each of the wool blocks now. So you can barely tell it's there from a distance away. And it helps so much with making this place safer and actually usable. And there we go. Let's take a look back at this guy and see how it's doing now. I'm super excited about this one, though. I've been working on it for quite a while, and I think it's really coming together for a boat that we just randomly threw together here. This side looks pretty good. It looks pretty dang good to me. Maybe what we can do instead is right over here. I wish we had wool slabs, to be honest, everybody. But if we do something like that and just help it feel a little bit harsher on the corner. Yeah, that works out pretty well. Okay, let's check the other side. Might as well use our tiny Minecraft boat to do it over here. But whipping ourselves back on around. Oh, that is looking fantastic. I would love to get a ladder that runs all the way up there if we want to. But now we just need a fishing rod and we are good to go. This is a life here, huh, Quesadilla? Just looking out over our lovely village, fishing up some fishies over here. About to get our first fish of the hardcore world. Oh, hopefully it's a good one. Hopefully it's a good one. Hopefully we don't miss it. What do we got going down here? Come on, Bobber. Come on. Let's go. Let's go right now. It's going to happen in just a second. And there we go. We've got ourselves a cod. Do you like cod? I don't really want it. Here, we can put it in there. That's totally fine. We have a barrel built into the storage beam of our structure. It's the best. Oh my gosh, folks. I'm so very excited to say we've got so much building work done today. Holy cow. This episode has been so fun. I do hope you all have enjoyed it. But I think, unfortunately, that's where we're going to be calling it here for today. Because, wow, it's going to be a long one. I haven't even started editing it. Wow, look at that creeper face with the shaders. Oh, it's standing through so very much here. But let me know what y'all want to be seeing in the next few episodes. Should we be jumping over to the Mushroom Island right away? Or should we finish some things out here first and foremost and then be moving on to working with some villagers? But anyways, thank y'all so very much for watching. Click that like button down below if you did enjoy today's episode. Click that subscribe button if you're brand new as well, my friends. And I will catch you on the flip side.